Yes, it's my uh, great pleasure to introduce, um, first of all, Joe, uh, <laughs> Joe Wald, who's in the centre. He's from Knight, uh, Knight Capital. Mark Goodman, who's closest to me, uh, who's Head of Quantitative Electronic Services Europe for SOCGEN. And then Simo Puhaka, who's Head of Trading at Pohya. Oh, no, I got it wrong. Sorry? Pohila. Pohila, Asset Management in, in Finland. So um, the title of this debate is debating the future of the buy-side-sell-side buy -side relationship in SOR smart order routing technology. The first thing that I want to say is that because it's my job to keep this debate going, I may find myself saying things which are certainly not the views of my employer and perhaps not even the views of me. Uh, I'll just be saying things every now and again to try and throw some, um, th throw some curveballs in, in, into our three panellists. So I guess the first question that I have uh, of these three gentlemen is, will the buy side start taking control of smart auto routing f for themselves? Will they take, will they take care of, the, of their own SOR sometime soon? Anyone want to respond? Thank you, Dave. Simon. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I, I think that's the case. That's where we're heading. Uh, and uh, that's because of, uh, you know, buy side gets smarter, first of all. Uh, I know there's a lot of people who haven't made their homework yet, but they will. Uh -huh. And, and there's a lot of, lot of slippage there when, when, when if you look at the, if you're interested in best execution, first of all. If, if that's, that's the thing, uh, you will find out that there's a lot of slippage between risk brokers, agent brokers, and, and when you find that, mm -hmm. you start to think, what's going on then? Uh, are they using my flow to make money? And, and most likely you, you will end up in, uh, in an answer that, yeah, that's the case. So uh, I, th I think really the, uh, the future is that the buy side will take more control. Like so, so if the buy side take more control of their own SOR, is it all over for the sell side? Yeah, well, either yeah. they will, uh, I see two ways. Either they will start to build up something those, themselves or they will require more transparency from the sell side. I mean, Mark. I, I, oh, oh, sorry. Uh, sure. <clears throat> no, I, just, I think that the fact that we're having this debate and, and that you know we are actually having a, a, a panel discussing whether whether the the buy or the sell side will be taking control over smart order routing is is pretty fantastic. I mean, the the fact that that we're even talking about this to me represents a tremendous opportunity, and I think it dispels a, a pretty big myth with respect to the commoditization of smart order routers and, and algorithms. I think that the only thing commoditized based on this topic of conversation is the fact that buy side is not happy with the services and not happy with the execution quality that they've been receiving from the sell side's products with respect to smart order routing. Mm -hmm. So to me, this is a huge opportunity. I think this is a great challenge and one that I believe Knight is very much looking forward to taking a part in and to uh, really to proving and to demonstrating to, to Simo and his colleagues on, on the buy side that we can deliver a product in which we will have transparency, we'll have metrics, we'll have clear, demonstrative, quantitative fact to show them how the sell side technology with respect to a smart order router really will give them a better quality execution than they can have on their own. And I think a big part of how we're going to deliver that is through a couple of things. First and foremost, the scale and scope in which we have aggregated order information is a huge point in which we can leverage to help develop a better smart order router. And I think that that's something that an individual buy side shop can never have because they're looking at a small silo of their own order flow. Mm -hmm. Some of the things that we've done is put together order awareness technology which allows us to leverage each and every order within our firm. Uh, and in the US we're the largest market share in, in I guess every category across the board in US equities. And having that leverage, having that order awareness technology has been able to allow us to quantify real results to our buy side clients in terms of best execution. I guess to the tune of uh, probably 20 or 30 percent of all of our aggressive order flow has been uh, implemented, has implemented or been triggered by this order awareness technology. And of that, 60 percent of that flow has received price improvement to the tune of an average of three basis points. So that, that's, a, that's a big deal and that's really the differentiator that I think the buy side is looking for. They're looking for hard facts, they're looking for quantitative data that will help them determine whether they really are getting a better execution or just being used as fodder for uh, some other type of strategy in terms of what the sell side is doing with that order flow.
And Mark, is that how you're seeing it at SOCGen? Uh, I think I would, I would dispute whether it's always the case that the broker's providing poor performance because of uh, they're trying to either you know, use that order flow for their own advantage. I think the fact is that there's still a lot of low quality smart order routing out there. The result is the same for the buy side, that it's high levels of slippage. I think the other point, and kind of Joe talked about giving facts and data in terms of what's happening. I think the other important thing that you mentioned was transparency. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people seem to feel that they should not be sharing what they're doing with clients. And there's two reasons to avoid sharing that. One is because actually what you're doing is not correct and therefore you don't want to broadcast it. Or the second one is you feel like you might be gamed. Right. But if you're talking with your client, that's neither in their interest or in your interest. So I think transparency is a key here. To be able to show the data on performance, but also on a client-by-client -client basis to be able to talk through them through the decisions you make with their order flow, which after all is their order flow, so they have a right to know that. Um, and then actually re-engineer that based on whether those are the right decisions to make for that client or not. Whether the, the dispute about whether the buy side will take uh, ownership of the store, I think we see that already in terms of clients are asking to customize the smart order routings based on those conversations. Mm -hmm. I think it's a, another level of argument to say that the buy side will take the smart order router fully in-house and own all the technology issues around that. However, if you're having that open discussion with your client, the driver for them to want to take the risk and expense of building the technology is less. So I think the buy side's already taking, taking control of the smart order router. It's physically being run by the sell side and they're using their knowledge and their technical ability to deliver what the client wants. Okay, so how do you provide the buy side with venue selection tools without worrying that actually you're kind of giving away the secret sauce? That, that, that in time, those kind of venue selection tools will just find themselves into buy side firms? Well, we, we share our venue selection tools with the buy side because mm -hmm. they're our clients. I think it used to be quite a simplistic conversation with, our, with clients when fragmentation first happened around which venues do I want to use and which, mm -hmm. which venues do I not want to use. And a lot of that was based on inaccurate data and to some extent experiences that they'd heard other people have in the market. We've tried to move to a more systematic way of measuring the quality of each pool for that client's order flow. And that allows a client not only to decide which pools they want to be in, but it also avoids clients having to decide to be excluded from a pool where there might be circumstances in which they want to use that pool. So we have no problem with those, that data and those measurements being held by the buy side because that means we can help them make better decisions that they will get better results from using our service. Joe? Yeah, no, I mean, I, I completely agree from that perspective. And I think in addition to, to that, you know, the market has become incredibly fluid. It's incredibly dynamic in terms of where liquidity exists at any given microsecond, at any given millisecond throughout you know, hundreds of different pools of liquidity. And what's in one pool today is not gonna be there tomorrow. What's in one pool uh, in the next few moments may be moving around searching for, for liquidity. So you've got multiple smart order routers throughout the street that are all going through different processes in terms of evaluating and finding the right place to, to trade in any given moment. So I think sharing that venue selection or sharing that venue of execution with our clients uh, is perfectly reasonable. And I think it's something that, that, that all brokers should do. Mm -hmm. uh, it's something the buy side should, should demand and it's their order. So it's, it's, it's perfectly reasonable to share that. But I think that it's oversimplifying how complex the problem is to say that just by sharing the venue is going to give the buy side all of the insight that they need in terms of being able to determine whether that router is doing a particularly good or poor job. Uh, it's part of it, but, but it's not the whole picture. Yeah, sure. So, so part of it is supplying metrics and analytics on the, the kind of results that you're getting at the different venues. But then, Simo, when you see those figures, how do you trust them? Yeah, exactly. I, I think that, you know, customization is one thing, and, and then having control is the other. And I think that all comes back to the business model, what Brokers has. So if, it's, if the business model, model is just bringing the best price for the client, best execution, that's, that's the other thing. But if you have a training for activities, there, systematic market making, internalization, that sort of thing, then you have a conflict of interest, that's for sure. So, so, and then, you know, how to measure it? Measure it. Um, it's, th th there's no perfect answer there. But, uh, you know, just you have to go and see the figures. And if you see that there, there are differences between the risk and agency, there's something wrong then, and then you should have a discussion there. 
Yeah, no, I agree. I think you know the discussion really should be around what type of flow you want to interact with, how are you measuring, and how are you mitigating any opportunity for you know someone take advantage of, of the order that you that you're trying to execute. Um, you know, there's there's proprietary trading going on in every single venue. Uh, there, there, whether it's, it's an exchange or a dark pool, high frequency is you know 40, 50, 60 percent of, of the marketplace. Uh, and using that and understanding that that's a reality mm -hmm. and how to interact with that flow is, is important. Yes, exactly. Sure. What's the first when you, you go first? What's the when you, you go first when the I send the order to you? When you send us an order, the first yeah. venue that we go to is based on our order awareness technology. So the first place we'll go is based on a, a quantitative It's heat not your dark pool. It's not our dark pool, no. It's, it's, it's a quantitative heat map approach based on where we received the last execution and at what level of speed we received that and what metrics we we're using to determine how effective that, that uh, execution was. So we look at uh, how fast it took us to execute there, uh, what the quality of that execution was, uh, and, and see if we were able to uncover size. Okay. Now, in many cases, uh, you know, we have a, a huge dark pool, so we're able to internalize that order flow. Uh, and internalizing that order flow on an agency basis for our clients has definitely proven out to be a, a very high quality execution because you're able to minimize any other market impact or information leakage, but it's definitely not the first or the only destination that we'd look to, uh, to fill your order in. Yeah, I think on our side, we, we don't go to our own venue first, but we measure our own venue in the same manner we measure the other venues. I think one thing that the sell side is not very transparent on is actually the methodology they use to produce these measurements. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of reversion statistics put around dark pools and whether, you know, if the reversion is low or it's high, there's a lot of noise around those figures. We're actually trying to measure behavior in the market after we trade in a dark pool. And where we see, but where we can measure that behavior, we can understand our impact much better. Not just, you know, where the price went, but how did people react to our trade in the dark pool based on the quotes on the lip book. And we feel that measurement is much stronger. It's something that we can apply to our own pools so that when we look, we let new people into AlphaX, then we can understand the impact of using them. And I would suggest that the, there's a lot of talk about policing dark pool from brokers, but I actually think that systematically it's quite rare. And we see brokers recently coming out with looking at kind of providing shades of quality of liquidity in their dark pool. And our question would be, why now? Why do you have to start that now? That should be the first thing you do before you let people into your dark pool. Right, right. So, so how, how do you measure whether your smart order router really is giving you best execution? Well, it's, I mean, it, there's a great. They're, they're that's called a, smart, yeah. but there's no proof that they are. I, I, I think that I think that there are some that are extremely advanced. I think you have to tackle the problem from 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 two from two places. A smart order router has two major challenges. The first is when it needs to be aggressive and go out and take liquidity, and the second is when it needs to be passive and post liquidity. What does it do, and how does it do that? Mm -hmm. So those are two unique and distinct challenges that that a good smart order router really has to think long and hard about how to do and has to do a lot of analysis and research on, on what are the best ways to achieve both of those objectives. I think on the taking of liquidity side, some of the factors that you want to be able to measure are, are you know, how fast were you able to access that destination, uh, what happened in that destination after you received that execution, what was the market impact, uh, were you able to receive a, a large or small size, what level of fulfillment of your particular order were you, were you able to uh, were you able to get when you sent an order to that destination and the frequency of that? So are you always going to one destination and getting your full size, or are you always going to that destination getting a small piece and seeing what happens afterwards? So that, that's the taking challenge, uh, and that's a very complex one in, in and it of itself.